Hey guys, Dr. Daphne Lim. Today we'll be talking about one of the most important molecules or substances that you find in cosmetic products, and that's hyaluronic acid. And I'll tell you why it's important, because it is one of the top three, I guess, building blocks in your dermis. So your dermis is below your epidermis, and that's the one that's responsible for aging. So we're talking about things like wrinkles, fine lines, and volume loss. So in the dermis, you've got collagen, you've got elastin, and you've got hyaluronic acid, and they're all made by cells called the fibroblasts. So what happens with time? Well, with time, sun damage, smoking, all of these constituents which make up the foundation of the dermis gets degraded. So hyaluronic acid decreases with time, and hence, that's why replenishing your body's natural sources of HA can give you rejuvenation. Okay, so let's get to basics. How is it made? So hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring substance. It's found, it's a ubiquitous molecule, it's much like DNA sequencing, yeah? So it's like the constituents of DNA. It's found throughout the animal kingdom and um, originally was made by, believe it or not, <laughs> chickens, yeah? Rooster combs, yeah? But now over the last oh, 15, 20 years, it's been purified. So pharmacists and uh, chemists make it using certain strains of bacteria, obviously purified into hyaluronic acid of different molecule sizes. Okay, so the formulations of hyaluronic acid, we can talk about three types of formulations. First, the first two will be on your skin, yeah? So we're talking about hyaluronic acid in creams, hyaluronic acid in serums, but last of all, hyaluronic acid as an injectable, which is where hyaluronic acid comes into the greatest play. So let's talk about creams first and why hyaluronic acid is important. So over the past 10 years, hyaluronic acid has been made more affordable because of the purification process. Now all companies, like just about every skincare range will have their own hyaluronic acid based moisturizer or serum. So everything from, believe it or not, the ordinary all up to high end skincare will contain this. So what's the difference between serums, creams and the different types of hyaluronic acids out there? Well, first of all, the true, I guess, the, the true illustration of what a, a hyaluronic acid does is actually is to moisturize the skin. So, hyaluronic acid is one of the most powerful humectants. One molecule can bind up to, so weight for weight, yeah, um, one gram of uh, hyaluronic acid can bind up to a thousand grams of water. So, it's very powerful in that sense. Now, what are what the constituents of what makes a good hyaluronic acid based cream? Well, it's kind of tricky because hyaluronic acid is kind of moody. It also depends on your environment, yeah? Because in a low humidity environment, so low humidity, for example, if you're in the winter, for example, in the UK or, or Australia or even the US, in a desert environment where the air is arid, um, if you put on hyaluronic acid without a moisturizer, what happens is that it can take moisture from the deepest part of your skin. But in an environment where there's more than 50% humidity, uh, for example, Asian countries or in summer, yeah, uh, hyaluronic acid actually takes moisture from the air and draws it into your skin. So the molecular weight of this is very important. High molecular weight hyaluronic acid does not penetrate into the deeper layers, the dermal layers of the skin. In fact, even low molecular weight HAs have not been shown to go into the dermis, and the most reliable way to actually deliver that is an injection. So we'll go through that later. So we'll talk about creams. Now, the majority of creams nowadays, including things, for example, from the ordinary, even basic uh, compounds uh, with HAs, from, you, know, you buy this for about five bucks, and they contain what's known as um, polymolecular weight or multi-molecular weight molecules. And these molecules range from 50 kilodaltons all the way up to 2,000 kilodaltons. So most companies will have multi-molecular weight HAs. That is the progress of technology and that's the progress of purification and they've made it very affordable nowadays. So what does poly, uh, polymolecular weight mean? Basically, different weights of, um, of HA acids, yeah? Hyaluronic acids in molecular weights which range from, like I said, between 50 all the way up to heavy molecules that are 2,000 kilodaltons. And most companies will put between three to five 
different type of weights into the HAs. And what happens is that these molecules penetrate to different depths. So you have the low molecular weight going into the deeper layers of the dermis and the high molecular weight um, HAs going into the upper part of the epidermis, thereby trying to hydrate the entire portion. Now, the rate limiting factor is still, it cannot penetrate the dermis because the molecule is too big. So no matter what the companies say, um, HAs actually in the cream or serum uh, formulation just sits under the top of your epidermis, yeah? Now, in my opinion, I would not waste um, a lot of money on HAs. That's cream, yeah? And I'll tell you why. The body's natural resources uh, has enzymes, yeah, called hyalonidase, and that breaks down your body's natural HAs, but it also breaks down HAs which are delivered both by injection but also creams. And even with non-cross-linked HAs, which are basically that sits on your skin, even with the best brands, the results are only temporary, at the most 24 to 36 hours, because the enzyme actually breaks down the chemical constituents of creams and serums. So in my view, why do you want to spend you know, 200 bucks on a cream or serum when it degrades very quickly? So <laughs> I know it may be controversial, but I do believe that if you're gonna use HAs Topically, go, go, go simple. Uh, save your dosh for uh, HAs which are delivered intradermally or into the hypodermis, and that's through injections. So when we come to how HAs are used in the skin, uh, I like to break it down into texture, tone, and volume. Now, with things like lasers, lasers only work on the top part of your skin, and to a limited degree, your upper part of your dermis. So it, lasers work by improving skin texture. However, the active ingredient of hyaluronic acid actually helps all three, top part, texture, tone, and most importantly, volume. So that is a powerful anti-aging tool. And if used correctly in all, the, all three aspects, it can give you really good skin rejuvenation without the downtime of lasers. Now, we talked about formulations between serums and creams. What's the difference? Well, nowadays, I guess, you know, because this is called a cosmeceutical uh, and not a prescribed medication, the industry is not regulated. So for example, someone can call it a serum because with that name of serum, they can charge more. But is the concentration more? Is the bioavailability more? No, it's not. Um, so serums are certainly, uh, they're good because they actually, I guess, invoke that it's a concentrate. But if you do have dry skin, what you might want to do is to use a normal cream, right? So don't beat yourself up in regards to which is better, a serum or a cream, because it really depends on, on your skin sensitivities, on how dry your skin is, on where you live, on your budget as well. So stick, go with the creams. If it agrees with you, try the serums. And I've linked down below a couple of brands which I, I guess, had a look at and um, I do recommend, okay? So when we talk about oral supplementation of hyaluronic acid, does it work? The answer is no. Why? Because your stomach and your acids break down hyaluronic acid. Recent studies have shown that taking a derivative such as glucosamine can actually help the skin, but the, but the studies are extremely limited. So if you want to take glucosamine for your joints, by all means, go ahead. Uh, but you're not gonna get a great skin rejuvenation from that. Okay, guys, so now we go into how I actually use hyaluronic acid. So most dermatologists would use this intradermally or in the hypodermis, and we use basically fillers. So I've done a few videos on how I use HA fillers. Uh, they're very um, flexible, very flexible platform. So. It depends on what I'm rejuvenating. It depends what I want. We can use different types of fillers. So brands like the big brands, for example, Juvederm, Restylane, Bolotero, all of these have subgroups within it. For example, Juvederm has Volif, Voluma, um, and Vobella, and many others. So all of these have different properties. They're all cross-linked, which means under your skin, well, in your dermis and in your hypodermis, these fillers range between nine months all the way up to two years plus. And it's a different viscosities as well. They all have different properties. And I think it's very important that a dermatologist works with 
different brand names because that gives you more of a, I guess, uh, more tools to use, yeah? Uh, it's like trying to paint art with just three or four colors. It's kind of okay, but it's not gonna be the best. So that's why I think within all of the subgroups, you pick the filler which has the best properties that you want to deliver to the patient. For example, if you're using dermal fillers to treat um, uh, volume loss, uh, you want a foundation. You want something a little bit harder, a little bit thicker, and which lasts a little bit longer, compared to something like, uh, for example, Vobella or Restylane, where you want some delivery of fine fillers, uh, very low viscosity, into an area, for example, like um, your tear troughs, or um, acne scars, for example, atrophic fine acne scars, or even fine lines and wrinkles. So it's very important to actually incorporate the right filler in the right circumstance. Now, just to summarize, guys, um, hyaluronic acid is very important. I do believe that the importance is actually in the dermis. Sure, it can act as a good moisturizer, but I wouldn't waste um, more than $20, $30 um, in regards to HAs. Two other things before I finish. What other uses for HAs apart from a moisturizer for your skin? Well, secondly, uh, it can actually help with inflammation. So there's lots of research has shown that HAs, for example, in seborrheic dermatitis or eczema, providing there are no other additives, yeah, can actually help decrease inflammation. Secondly, HAs can actually increase the penetration of your actives, such as retinol, retinoic acid, niacinamide, vitamin B, and also ascorbic acid into the deeper layers of the skin. So it can act as a, um, as a, a vehicle to help transport the actives into the deeper layers. So guys, I hope you liked that summary on hyaluronic acid. I do believe it's one of the key things that, um, I guess, you know, it's important in anti-aging, yeah? And it's important to understand the pros and cons of this molecule. If you like this video, please like, share, and by all means, comment. I'll see you same time, same place next week.